I think the issue here is it's not demand pull inflation. Yeah. It's currency devaluation. And currency devaluation is different. The fact that something costs more because the dollar has been devalued is very different than inflation. It still gets counted the same as inflation or CPI. But the reality is, it's it's kind of when, you know, not to, to make it all about crypto, but when you talk about Bitcoin, right? One Bitcoin equals one Bitcoin, just like one dollar equals one dollar. But we never talk about currencies in their own native state. We talk about them in some cross, right? We talk about dollar yen, dollar euro, dollar uh, loony. We don't talk about the dollar as a dollar. And same thing with Bitcoin. Bitcoin actually, right, has done exactly what you would expect it to do. The Fed printed 50% of all the dollars and Bitcoin over that two year period is up 100%. Right? From 10,000 to 20,000, now it's a little bit higher. Than that. Okay, that's exactly what it should have done because it's not the Bitcoin change, one Bitcoin still one Bitcoin, but the currency went to 50 cents, one over 50 cents is two. So it doubled. And so the Bitcoin per dollar went up, just like my house went up, not because the house got better, but because the currency I, de I value it in got worse. I still think Bitcoin has another leg down, but I think you could get a move to 25,500, maybe as high as 28,000 before that next leg comes in. My downside target on Bitcoin remains 12 to 13,000 before any real chance of a longer term bottom being put in. All right, so again, the bottom line is today for the first time, we're seeing a confluence of major resistance levels hit on the US dollar, the DXY, and we're seeing a potential topping tail end we also saw a sell the news event on the dollar in relation to the jobs data. That right there has me accumulating gold, silver, as well as some Bitcoin down here. I think you look for a near term pop. And I stress this, folks, we're not talking long term trading here. This is a near term move that likely will see a couple week up move in those commodities in Bitcoin. And again, I think that could be a short term bullish signal for that, even the stock market potentially. Hex is decorrelated from Ethereum and Bitcoin because the majority of its liquidity is tied to the dollar, not tied to a cryptocurrency. Most cryptocurrencies move up and down together, not because of an evil mastermind where there's someone saying these are sympathetic products so they should trade similarly. It's actually just because they're bonded by the liquidity in their trading pairs. When Hex first launched, it was tied primarily to Ethereum, and then it was tied primarily to USDC, and then some will came along and tied it to Ethereum, but then that will went away it's tied back to USDC again. So it's really up to the market participants on what pairs they want to provide liquidity. And so if you look at Hex versus Bitcoin, Hex is up versus Bitcoin 250 fold. Now, today, as we speak from January 5th of 2020, it's up versus the dollar 250, what is it? Two, it's 25, God darn it, whatever, a quarter of 10,000 X's, 250 or 2,500 X. So the, the returns are still absolutely insane. And, and that's the thing is it's like, okay, if Bitcoin's gonna drop 75, Ethereum's gonna drop 85, and Hex is gonna drop 95, which one of them do you think is gonna get up the hardest? Let's look at Bitcoin. In, five, in the five years from the all time high of 2018, 2017, at the end of it, early 2018, till, uh, Five years later, Bitcoin did a 3.5x its all-time high. It went from 20k to 69k in five years. It's trash. <laughs> it's like it's absolute garbage. And in, the, in, the, in two years, Hex went up 10,000x. So like you used to be. So let's take Ethereum. You used to be able to get 2,000 Ethereum for one Bitcoin when they had their crowd sale. Now you can get uh, I think 14. And Bitcoiners don't understand they're getting slaughtered. You're like, hey guys, uh, we know how to read price charts out here in reality land. And you used to be able to get 2,000, and now you can just get 14. The unemployment numbers, like the CPI numbers, are all BS. Since March 2020, three and a half million Americans left the workforce, and many others in many countries all around the world. So when you see, oh, we're at 3.7% unemployment, absolute BS statistic. There's a lot of people that just don't want to work or be subjected to crappy salaries. They find other ways to survive uh, doing different things. So that's the first thing. Second of all, for the first time ever, I found myself agreeing with Nouriel Roubini, some people call him Dr. Doom, 
and uh, he says uh, if something about it, you're delusional if you think the coming recession will be short and shallow and that's that's the million dollar question here is are we going into a stagflationary global debt crisis or will the government print us out of this recession that will determine how short it will be and if they re when they discover uh oh everything is crashing down around us let's take those 150 basis points back and let's print more money the printing money is going to happen as i mentioned with those two bills of trillion dollars that's just what's going now the the back to your question is what happens now there was a very interesting post from bill ackman he's the bond king probably a top 10 investor and he was upset that jp is not doing enough but he's talking his bag he needs kind of higher interest rates for his bonds to kind of do well and as we go risk on again this is getting back to your fundamental question i believe bitcoin will do well it uh, it, it is this it is the hardest asset on earth therefore it should be a perfect inflation hedge but the last 18 months it has proven it is not the case because it's tied to risk on assets and there's a lot of money on the sidelines that needs to find a home they can't go into the bond market who's going to take two and a half percent yield in an eight percent inflationary environment when the reality is like 10 14 percent it's ridiculous so money needs to find a home uh, high growth companies do well in recessions certain risk assets do well in recessions too and i believe bitcoin is in that category so i don't think it's the kiss of death i think it's only a matter of time before people will sniff out that perfect inflation hedge the perfect hard asset that is getting more and more adopted every single day across every metric and it's massively scarce that's been my thesis on bitcoin from day one so we just have to wait for the time it's, it's a waiting game before it does turn around all of the european inflation is gas prices all of it and the gas prices are because russia has huh, we give you most of your gas you want to sanction us you want to seize our assets out of thin air mm -hmm. oh guess what We'll just charge you more for gas. Or, even better, we'll threaten to cut off the gas. And then what happens to price? The Fed can't control any of that. And so the Fed, I believe, is simply trying to reload the gun, meaning put some interest rate hikes on, so that when they acknowledge that we're in a recession, we're in a recession right now, right? First quarter was negative, second quarter's negative. We're in a recession. And if they turn it into the Great Depression by over-tightening, because that's how the Great Recession turned into the Great Depression back in the 20s, I mean, in the 30s, is by taking liquidity out of the system. Economies need liquidity. And when you take liquidity out, bad things happen. So I think the Fed's making a big policy mistake. We'll see how it plays out. Uh, but I think they will start cutting before people expect, sometime probably in the fall. Look at the dollar chart. And the reason why the dollar chart is so important today is because it looks like we may be getting a near-term top in the US dollar. Now, if you've been following the US dollar, you know it's been soaring all year long, recently spiking dramatically. The Euro has been collapsing to almost par against the dollar. Now, the key here is what I'm seeing in the charts today. So let's dive right in, folks, and take a look at the charts. So this is the daily chart of the DXY. What you can clearly see right here is we had an initial spike up and we've reversed the gains and are basically flat on the dollar. Now, some of you may say, well, what's the big deal? Well, this is the big deal. Number one, we had the jobs data here on Friday morning. The jobs data was very, very good. That usually would cause a spike up in the dollar. The dollar did spike higher intraday off of that news and then reversed. In the history of all my trading, in the 20 years that I've traded, what I found out is that when good news comes out and something initially spikes and then reverses, it tells you big money is selling into it. So that's what we have here. We have big money likely dumping into that good news on the jobs report, and that is a bearish short-term signal. In addition, this may be creating a topping tail on the chart, all right? So a topping tail is a bearish technical signal that tells you a reversal is at hand. Now, as if that's not enough, flip over to your monthly chart on the dollar. This is the DXY. This is going all the way back to 1999 to 2000. And let's put some trend lines in here for us to try to figure out. <laughs> 